So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and my first update video of 2022. Anybody else scared shitless about 2022? How the hell? Anyway, uh, by the by, uh, this is the first battalion I painted up this year. This is the, uh, must get it right this time, the 32nd uh, Cornwall Regiment, British Napoleonics figures. Now, um, don't get, don't go together very well in a column, but then they probably will never be in a column. They'll be in a thin red line because that's what the Brits are supposed to do. Um, so it, it, long, I've had this unit a long time, um, primed and ready to go. And, and when I was shifting everything into the building here um, to get everything ready and packing out and finding all the different figures that I found them, um, I knew I had them. So, you know, people who took the mickey out of me finding lots of things, I knew these were out there. Um, I just didn't realize that they'd been rather crushed in a box of stuff. Um, so a few of the heads had gone missing, a couple of the uh, weapons were broken. Um, they were in a bit of a sorry state, so I felt I really had to get them done. Um, and that's what I've done. So I painted them up, found some spare heads, put them on. Um, if you look carefully, you can probably see the different heads on some of them. Um, also largely found uh, new bayonets, although one hasn't stuck. Uh, which is annoying, um, but um, on the whole, uh, tidied them up a considerable amount and got them painted up so they can go in the cabinet ready for the next black powder game, um, which I'm very pleased about. So the uh, Cornwall Regiment, I, I love Cornwall. Uh, my half-brother lives down in Cornwall um, and I go there fairly regularly and um, I love, the, love the, the, the area very much. So I had to do a regiment of them and I had the flags from GMB, so... Um, that's why these are. Plus, they're slightly unusual. They have white facings, which um, uh, not all British regiments have. But um, that's them done. So also, as I mentioned uh, in the last video I did, um, I uh, found when I was, again, sorting through the boxes of stuff to come to the games room, um, I found a, a whole load of, um, well, a couple of boxes of French Napoleonic infantry and a few sprues that were left over from my uh, Cleveburg and my um, Kingdom of Naples projects um, and I thought well I might as well paint them up they're all they're all in great coats or most of them are in great coats so that makes painting really quick and easy so um, I, I whacked these out this is the third battalion I've done um, so this is um, a, the 11th light infantry regiment um, so I just used the flag that came with the box. These are Warlord miniatures, I believe. The command group is metal, but everybody else is plastic. Uh, as I said, they're all in great coats, a dead cinch to paint. Um, just a bit of variety in the different colors, mainly using contrast paints. Um, the guys with, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the officer group, some of those have just got their dress uniforms. But again, the light infantry are pretty simple because they're largely blue. The blue trousers, blue jackets, um, so very, very simple and easy to paint. Um, unlike the Brits that need lots and lots of different um, touch-ups and intricacies, I found the French very easy to paint, um, which is, which is, I guess, is good. So that's um, that's the final box done um, of those Frenchies. I think that gives me actually surprisingly quite a few French battalions to use, um, which which is great and um, will allow me to fight some solo games or you know if people uh, come around for a game they don't have to bring all their troops so i can use some of mine uh, which is always always useful so that's another battalion down two battalions in less than a week <laughs> but have a lie down so this past month or so um or past couple of weeks anyway seems to have been a very heavy terrain building uh, period for me and um, it was really started with um, the game I had down the club um, with Alec and the guys about uh, playing um, Crusader um, Lion Rampant and we realised we just didn't have much um, deserty terrain and I thought that's remiss um, so I picked up some really cheap and nasty plastic palm trees and some tufty things um, from Amazon Oh, might be an eBay, don't know, they came from China, <laughs> very cheap and tatty. Um, and I used some sand, I also picked up these MDF uh, boards. I thought they were going to be slightly thicker than they were, um, but anyway, they are what they are. 
Um, and um, I've basically produced some sort of wadi or sort of deserty areas, rough ground, um, palm, foresty things, woodlands. Anyway, sort of broken ground of, of various descriptions that I can use in uh, desert games and just add a bit of flavour to the, to the, the terrain. I've um, tried to sort of tone these plastics down by putting them in a, a dip. Um, they're still a bit shiny and obviously plastic, but three foot rule should be fine. Um, and as you may have just seen, I drilled holes through the MDF and then just poked the things through with super glue which seems to be holding reasonably well, though I just noticed one of these trees was a bit wonky. I don't know, one of them seemed to be a bit floppy floppy, so I might need a bit more glue in it. Anyway, um, you know, simple terrain, simple to use, um, simple to store hopefully as well, um, and uh, ready for the next deserty game I play. So also with the terrain, um, I had a few more bits of this MDF, um, which I've just turned into sort of rough ground areas that um, might be useful in other games. I had originally thought to make some of these into hills, um, but they're just not thick enough really to show up, so uh, rough ground they'll be. Uh, there's also a resin building. Uh, this is from Halls, I think. I uh, had it kicking around for ages, and I just thought I'd paint it up. Not entirely sure. I tried to do sort of um, distressed worn boarding on the outside I'm not sure it necessarily quite works um, it'll do it'll do but that's finished and that can form part of my uh, North uh, North American games when I play them because uh, it's very much in keeping with that period I think it is actually supposed to be an um, American Civil War building on their website so more terrain done so next up, uh, this is a squad of Greek Second World War, um, I think called Evazone, Evazones. Uh, this is the mountain, the elite mountain um, troops of the Greek army. Um, I, as you may have seen, if you've seen my video on um, the, the, the Great Escape Games um, Kickstarter, Greek Second World War figures I, I painted up. I wanted to have a couple additions to that army, so this is one of them. This is, uh, as I say, can be the elite company or elite platoon within that division. Um, you can see they're largely sculpted similarly to the uh, to the other regular troops, um, but there's a number of uh, a number of the figures here who have uh, soft caps with the uh, very um, uh, recognisable sort of black tassel hanging down the back um, which you can still see actually if you go to uh, if you go to Greece and you'll see them in their ceremonial dress where the sort of um, literary dress in many ways it's sort of a white sort of um, uh, skirt affair with uh, white tights and pom-poms on the shoes and they wear a red sort of uh, fezzy type cap with uh, that black coming down the back um, in wartime obviously they went for khaki um, but um, they were a very effective uh, formation and along with the uh, the cavalry in the Greek Second World, Ar Second World War Army were the sort of uh, the elite troops um, that um, did a considerable amount of damage to the Italians um, in those early days of uh, the failed attempt by the Italians to invade Greece. So another battalion done, um, another platoon done um, and ready to join that army. So next up, um, a little unit of um, what Martin, a seventh son, would describe as the little green bar stewards. Um, this is uh, another group of 95th. The majority of these are Atlantic miniatures. Um, as I said when I showed off the first group that I did, um, I had a box set that I got from CrackCon in the drawer there, um, in the raffle, and um, they're, they're really nice models. You can do your shop, figure which I did um, and um, yeah really really easy to put together the these two on this end um, are I think they're warlord ones I'm not entirely sure that I, I found them when I was sorting through all the figures here in the uh, in the boot HQ um, and um, I thought I might as well paint them up at the same time so uh, they're surplus to requirement as is this other sharp figure but the rest of the group are going to go 
so that I have two um, groups in um, sharp practice or in uh, muskets and tomahawks plus um, two um, big men um, which will form part of well basically anything I'm going to use I'm never going to need more than two 95th groups in any of my skirmish games um, as I say nice figures really enjoyed painting them up uh, the surplus ones I'll probably sell off um, but um, nice to do so that's another load of 95th painted up so next up I'm continuing with my um, Peninsula War looking village um, I showed a video showcase of um of these games of war um resin models uh, which i'm really impressed with bought myself some for christmas um and i've continued down painting up the ones that i've bought so i've got a couple more walls and another single store building to do um but i've managed to get the gates done um much more of the walling there's a little side gate there um the um uh, double floored building there with the uh, portcullis underneath or whatever it is underneath this one here with the balcony another double story just straight up double story with no um, no balcony or anything on that and there's the single story one that I showed before I, I'm so impressed with these I think they're such lovely models uh, a little bit more expensive than the MDF but um, the effect is fantastic so I'm really pleased how these fellas have come up and painted up and I think these will look outstanding on the gaming table um, I think I've got probably just about enough walling I might in time get a little bit more wall um, just because I think this is really good stuff um, if the posts are separate um, and they they've, even down to they've worked out the the connection there so that when you put the wall in just little things like that make it all the difference so um yeah really pleased with how this has turned out if i want to play with the gates open i can just do that so there you go <laughs> so that's um another bit of terrain done been busy on the train this month so next up uh this is some more uh support for my greek second world war army um, this is a mountain howitzer um, from a company I've never heard of before called Templar Games, Templar Miniatures. Um, and um, I have to say I bought this because I didn't realise that um, actually you could also get one from Great Escape. Um, so I've now got two because I've got one coming from there as well. But anyway, it's a nice little model actually. I, it came in multiple parts and wasn't entirely initially wasn't entirely obvious how to put together but I've uh, I persisted looked at the images of it online and um, uh, sort of worked out how to do it a um, bit fiddly but yeah it's all right it has that very very early sort of World War one look to it which I quite like because obviously a lot of the Greek equipment um, was pretty much uh, obsolete uh, although they had had a major rearmament just before um the italians invaded um because they could feel the way the war, the winds were going um so i've done it uh, on a nice big base um i fixed the crew three man crew permanently um just because i just think it looks better that way i know from a bolt action gaming point of view you're better off having them individually but i just think listen it looks nicer this way um, some of the sticks were those, um, well the sticks are from those, uh, um, uh, what was it, Poundland um, gardens, um, sort of twine things that you wrap things around in the garden, um, which I have to credit Steve for telling me where they were, and I picked up a bundle myself, and they're very, very useful indeed, just chopping bits off and uh, using them as sort of uh, logs that have been hastily shoved in front of a gun. Um, and a couple of them standing up at the back where, you know, obviously the uh, the trunks came from. Um, try to make it rugged and mix in with my the style of the figures uh, that I've already done for the Greek army. So sort of mountainous, lots of rocks and, um, yeah, shaly things. Because most of the fight against uh, the Italians certainly was uh, in, the, in the hills around uh, the border with Albania. 
Um, also, there's I did buy an extra pack of crew. Well, the gun came with. Uh, well, actually, no, the gun didn't come. Gun didn't come with any crew. Um, but the crew packs had four figures uh, for bolt action for a light gun. You only need uh, three. But I thought I might as well get an extra pack, um, and so I've painted those up as well. Uh, and they're on the bases around. I put them on individual bases so that if I do want to play, uh, make this a medium gun, for instance, I could do that. <laughs> Doesn't look quite so good, but it is what it is. But I'm very pleased with how these came out. I think they're. Um, it looks good. Um, I love the little that mini diorama. <laughs> um, not something I usually do, but um, it's come out pretty good. So there you go, that is uh, what I've been up to recently. Uh, lots of terrain, a few figures, good start to the year. I hope your projects are going equally well. I hope uh, you are staying fit and healthy uh, in the mad, mad world we live in and um, are getting some gaming in as well. Um, in the meantime, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.